Should you purchase or lease a vehicle that is used for business? I get this question all the time. And in this video, I'm gonna answer it for you. However, doing so would be impossible without knowing your exact facts and circumstances. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through the math so you can finally understand how this stuff actually works and you can recompute this with your scenario to arrive at your answer. Let me show you what I've prepared so you can get a preview of what to expect when you watch this video. I'm first gonna explain the tax deductions you receive when you lease a vehicle, and I'll show you both the standard mileage rate method and the actual expense method if you're leasing. I'll then explain the same if you were to purchase the vehicle, which does include depreciation, and we'll discuss depreciation a little bit in the video as well. And then lastly, we'll analyze the numbers together so you can understand what your true tax savings and cash outlay are when using a vehicle for business. Are you ready? Let's go ahead and dive in. But before we do so, let me just quickly introduce myself if it's your first time watching. My name is Navi Miraj. I'm a tax strategist and CPA that teaches entrepreneurs how to save thousands of dollars in taxes. I do this for free right here on social media, but also through a course. The course is designed to transform a business owner from knowing nothing about bookkeeping, taxes, and tax strategies, and transition them into a tax savvy entrepreneur who saves thousands of dollars in taxes each and every year. If you're interested in learning more, just click on the link in the description below or visit my website, which is NaviMuradCPA.com. Before we go into a deep dive of the numbers, let me just show you what our assumptions are so you know kind of what we're working with here. I'm saying that you purchased a vehicle for about $45,000, okay? This could be a higher end, maybe Toyota, if you will, like a RAV4. Um, it could be a Model Y after the EV tax credit, things like that, okay? Something that's realistic. A down payment, I'm saying $3,500 is your down payment if you purchase or if you lease, same amount. Business use percentage is gonna be 80%. If you finance, it's 60 months at an interest rate of 5%, a monthly principal and interest payment of $783, and a monthly lease payment of $575. That'll make more sense here in a second when you see the actual numbers. Okay, so we're starting off with the lease option, and we're going to cover the standard mileage method, and again, the actual method as well. So we're saying here that this is just a calendar, right? January through December. And I'm saying throughout the month, you drove 1,000 miles total, and 800 of those miles were business miles. So your business use percentage was 80%. In the real world, it wouldn't work this way, but let's pretend for a moment, at the end of the year, you landed at 12,000 miles total, 9,600 of those miles were business for a business use percentage of 80%. So how does this work? You leased a vehicle, you wanna use the standard mileage rate, what is your tax deduction? Your tax deduction is simply 500, well, I shouldn't say $536. Your tax deduction is 800 miles times the tax rate that the IRS is giving you for each mile that you drive. So 800 times the 67 cents is $536, okay? That is the tax deduction you receive when using the standard mileage rate method with a lease. You can see that for the year, it's $6,432. Now, if you lease and you use the actual method, you can deduct a little bit more. You can get the lease payment is gonna be included, auto insurance, fuel, you know, the license plate and registration fees for the first uh, month is probably when you'll incur that expense. And then I'm gonna go ahead and assume that you wash the vehicle once a month and it costs you $40 to do so. The total cost in month one was $1,265, but remember, that's the full amount. You gotta reduce this for 80% because that's your business use percentage based on the miles that you drove. So your tax deduction for the first month is $1,012. That goes down to about $732 and every month thereafter because you don't have those additional license plate and registration fees. So for the first year, leasing the vehicle using the actual method, it's $9,064 versus the standard mileage rate method, $6,432 is your deduction. Now let's transition to the purchase option, okay? If you purchase, you still have the option of using the standard mileage rate or the actual expense method. If you use the actual expense method, we've got depreciation to calculate, so we'll do that too. Okay, same facts up above, 1,000 miles a month, 800 of those miles are business use. Now what do we have here? Since you finance the vehicle, you can deduct the business portion of the interest expense. So your total interest was $173 in the first month, multiply by that by 80%, and you'll get the interest amount that you can deduct, plus, the standard mileage rate, which was five, 
sorry, which was $800 times the 67 cents got us to 536. So a total of $674.34 is your overall sort of tax deduction using this standard mileage rate method. And in this figure, we're including some of the vehicle loan interest. This number is gonna go down a little bit each month because the interest that you pay is going down each month as you pay down the principal on that note. Okay, so what's your deduction? $7,956 in year one using the standard mileage rate method. If we use the actual expense method, we can do a little bit more. We can deduct depreciation. Now, our depreciation is gonna be accelerated. I'm not gonna get into all of those weeds right here, but I will say that your depreciation deduction in year one is $16,320. Your vehicle loan interest uh, is the same figures that you saw up here. Then we have auto insurance, fuel, car washes, a little bit of maintenance. I'm saying you got an oil change in month six and you got some license plate and registration fees as well. So on average, your vehicle you know, deduction is around 1500 bucks. And so 18,188 is your year one tax deduction if you use the actual expense method versus 7,956 if you use the standard mileage rate method. Now, let's go through a comparison. I think this is where you might extract the most value and see kind of what's going on when you compare all of this. Let me walk you through this because it's kind of a lot of numbers, right? In year one, I'm saying if you lease and you take the mileage method, your cash outlay is $11,330. That's basically your monthly payments, uh, including your insurance and fuel and things like this, $11,330. Your tax deduction is $6,432. Where's that number coming from? Well, remember, use the mileage method, 6,432. Um, and that cash outlay, 11,330, that's the sum of all of this, okay? 11,330, that's where that's coming from. Then you have your marginal tax rate, okay? This is the, the highest tax bracket that you're in. Uh, I just chose 22%, I thought that was a reasonable tax rate to, or tax bracket to be in. What is your tax savings? It's your tax deduction times your marginal tax rate, so $1,415. And so your net cash outlay for the lease option using the mileage method is $9,915 if you round up, okay? If you use the actual method, it's uh, a little bit less, meaning your net cash outlay is a little bit less. It's $9,336, okay? That's the lease. Let me show you the purchase and then we'll cover years two and three and you'll see why I uh, decided to do this analysis for you. So. If you purchase, your cash outlay was $13,907.92, right? That's your principal and interest payment, car insurance, all that stuff. Your tax deduction is $7,956 when you use the mileage method, $18,188 when you use the actual method. Why is that? It's because of that accelerated depreciation you were able to take in year one. That's gonna decrease in years two and three, and you'll see that here in a second. Your tax bracket is still 22%. So what's your tax savings? 1750 versus $4,000. And so your net cash outlay was 12,158 when using the mileage method and 9,907 when using the actual method. So to achieve the lowest cash outlay in year one, you might choose to purchase and use the actual method, right? I'm not gonna explain all of that again, but in year two, let's kind of see what happens. For the lease, the numbers aren't going to change. They're kind of fixed, if you will. They're kind of locked in. So the numbers don't change in year two and year three. And for the purchase using the mileage method, the numbers don't change either. It's the actual method that changes. You accelerated your depreciation here and it was able to get a big chunk in year one. In year two, that is reduced, okay? This is not your depreciation number here. This is depreciation and some other expenses. But you can see the number reduced by around $7,000. So your depreciation will likely reduce by about that amount. And then in year three, you know, our tax deduction now is even lower than it would have been had you used the mileage method. So really to look at these numbers, you wanna look at years one through three and kind of add all this together. And so what you see here is with the lease option, if you choose the mileage method, you're gonna be out $29,745. The actual method, $28,000 is how much you're gonna be out. So it might make sense in this scenario to use the actual method if you're gonna lease. If you're gonna purchase, 
Then using the mileage method, you have a net cash outlay of 36,473. And if you use the actual method, your net cash outlay is $33,514. Now, I wanna make a um, point of this note here. Remember, we have something called depreciation recapture if we sell this vehicle. If you're just trying to accomplish the goal of saving the most amount of cash and not spending as much, then sure, you could lease, but remember, at the end of your lease, you don't own an asset, okay? So you're gonna have to go get another vehicle to lease and go through this whole exercise again. If you purchase, you can see what's happening here. Remember that we have depreciation recapture though. Let's look at this note. If at the end of the year, uh, specifically year three, I'm saying, you sold the vehicle that you purchased, you'd be subject to depreciation recapture. So without taking into consideration depreciation recapture, you might say, hey, let me use the actual method because my net cash outlay is 33,513. But assuming the vehicle's original purchase price was $45,000, right? We established that at the beginning of the video. And let's say it depreciated by a third after three years of ownership, okay? Assume this is a, uh, a Tesla or a Lexus that you purchase, uh, or I should say a Toyota or a Lexus that you purchase. Certainly not a Tesla, they have been depreciating a lot as uh, Elon drops prices uh, to keep up with sales. But for a Toyota or a Lexus, this is probably realistic. Now, this vehicle, after three years, is now worth $30,000. But remember, we've got to take the business use percentage, 45,000 times 80% business use, the amount allocated to the business sales or sort of purchase price was $36,000. When you went to go sell it, you got 30 grand for the vehicle at an 80% business use, so that's $24,000. You'll see how these numbers come into play in a second. So over the three years, you took depreciation expense of about $25,000. So its book value is now $11,000. That's the 36,000 minus the $25,000 of depreciation you took over three years. This asset is sitting on your books with a value of $11,000. Now, if you sell it and you get $24,000, remember 24,000, is the business use percentage. You really got 30, but 80% of the 30 is 24,000. And you have $11,000 book value. That means you have a gain of $13,000. So you have to pay income tax on that gain, which is called depreciation recapture. So you have to pay $2,860 back to the IRS in the form of income taxes for that depreciation recapture. So if you add this roughly three grand to this number, you're sitting right back at like 36.5, right? So really these uh, numbers sort of even out in this particular situation with this vehicle, this amount of miles and all that stuff. So keep in mind your scenario or your mileage may differ, right? No pun intended, of course. So what did you take away from this analysis? One takeaway you should be thinking of is that if you need, with a strong emphasis on need, a heavy vehicle with a gross vehicle weight rating of over 6,000 pounds, and you're in a high tax bracket, then maybe it makes sense to acquire a vehicle to get a large depreciation write-off in the first year. Just remember, eventually, you'll sell or trade that vehicle in and you will have to pay depreciation recapture. This is okay as long as you can do something with the year one tax savings. Can you use the tax savings to invest in your business and make more money? If the answer is yes, go for it. I'll sign off on that. Remember, if you wanna learn more, Beyond the scope of just should you purchase or lease a business vehicle, then I recommend visiting my website or clicking on the link in the description below to preview the course to see if it's a good fit for you. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this video and the analysis I've done for you, and I'll see you in the next video.